I know we're a bit uh, late, so I'll, I'll be as fast as I can. Um, my name is Laurent Zonier. I'm uh, a challenge designer, as it said, magician, security amateur, lock picker. And today I'm going to talk to you about stupid pen test tricks. So don't worry, you don't need to take notes. It's, there won't be any zero days or anything. It's just stupid things that work. Um, just to give you a background, recently I went uh, to a client, and that was the client every pen tester loves to hate. They were awesome. They had emet everywhere. They had bit9. They had fireeye. They had uh, patches. They had SRP. They had a half locker. Pretty much everything. They had so many things that I was stumped. I had a 10-day engagement, and by the ninth day and a half, I was miserable. I tried so many things, and nothing worked. So out of despair, I cheated. I'll tell you more about it later. And there's a really cool saying among pen testers, and it's the following. If it's stupid and it works, then it ain't stupid. And the more you think about it, you'll see this is my approach. Because I think that we, as technical people, sometimes we really try to do awesome stuff and James Bond stuff and everything, but we, just could, we could just be plain malicious and be more simple. Because when you think about it, the real criminals are often not as sophisticated as what most pen testers do, yet they get in. So perhaps we overcomplicate things. So yeah, that's what was, that was my client, 15 character policies. Uh, Responder didn't work. If you guys know what Responder is, it's the best tool for Windows pen testing right now, uh, along perhaps with Empire. Nothing works. It was a nightmare, um, and that's when it was fun. So what you do, you flip a table, you. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. So today I'll cover four aspects, uh, physical pen test, phishing, Wi-Fi, and actual Windows pen test. So first thing, physical pen test. Think about it. Nobody is James Bond. I mean, for real, we try to, like people have a Proxmark or Ravenhead to do long range reader. It costs $1,000, it's difficult. Um, people try to do key impressioning. Uh, people do lock picking, but I'm not sure. Like, if, when there's a rain and or it's at night, you're freezing. You're trying to lock pick outside. It sometimes could be very difficult. So how about we put things a bit easier? So, how many people know about key impressioning? Uh, like doing key impressions. Like people have putty that when you have access to a key, you put it in putty, and then you go home and you try to replicate the key. Or I've seen people, they stick it in their forearms hard enough so it leaves a mark so they could copy it. And I was like, why are you doing this? I mean, if you get access to a key, how about you take it and take another key from your, from your spare set and exchange it? Because all of us, I'm sure we have one or two keys that we have no idea really why we still have it. I mean, if you look in your keys right now, I'm sure you all have one key that perhaps was for something at some point and we have no idea about. So why do, you, do we guys keep copying keys when you can just plain steal them? So now I always carry a spare set. I have like keys, I have medicos that people have left me around, uh, Abloy, I have like all the keys, all the key set I, I need, so I could just steal them. Um, now, RFID cards. So RFID cards are cool, they are proxmarked, there are so many tools to clone RFID cards. So today I'm going to present to you our a universal RFID card. It's this one. I'm not sure if you see it. It's, uh, that's the card. So this card, I'm going to try to do a, do a demo. Um, let me, I'll, I'll scan this. Have you heard it? Let's try this. Oh, yeah, it works. Yeah, it works, all right? So all it is, it's this shitty um, uh, universe. <laughs> And all you do is, when you're piggybacking, because when you're piggybacking now, people are trained to look, hear, for, look for, the sound, hear, hear for the sound, because since they're before you, they can't see the little light, whether it's red or, red or blue, or whatever. The, the. So all you got to do is I do this, and it beeps. And here. So why are we bothering with... So people are bothering with uh, cloning cards and doing many stuff. Well, a $1... Chinese bots uh, radio just did the same thing. 
So it's really, really interesting. It's very simple. Um, but even as Proxmark, say you really, really need to clone a card because that stupid trick doesn't work, then you know people keep their cards right there, and the average Proxmark has an inch of range. So if you go here, like next to this region, and try, you look like a pervert, and it's kind of difficult, right? So what do you do next? Well, you know what, and that's a very real and stupid story. If you're wearing a hazmat suit, nobody challenges you. <laughs> like, if you're wearing a hazmat suit, people go like this and don't move. Because it's kind of worrying having two guys in a hazmat suit saying, you, running toward you. And actually, it's not illegal in Canada. So in Canada, you cannot impersonate a law, police officers. There are several things you cannot do. But as far as I know, it's not illegal to be a guy in a hazmat suit. So that's, it works really, really well. So if like you really need to read a few uh, cards and you don't want to be a pervert or you don't, yeah, and you, the, nothing works, try a hazmat suit. It works wonders. Now, one more thing. If nothing like this works, this one, this one is fake. So I cannot show you the actual picture, so that picture is a fake. But keep in mind, hackers take selfie too. So I had this security guard, and I'm sure, not sure if you can see on their card, but on cards there are numbers. And if you have those numbers, you don't need a fancy proxmark, you just need those numbers. So with a good phone and a selfie, you could take over companies doing physical pen tests with nothing but a selfie. And that works really, really well. And so it's all a matter of approach. Um, the way you can get a, a, a security guard to take a selfie is basically, well, that's my technique. I'm like, oh, hi. Um, are you working for a role? Aren't you the famous John B. Smith? Man, you look just like him. My wife will be jealous. Mind if I take a selfie? Because you don't want to look like a creep. All you, take the ego way. Like, you look like an actor. You look really like that actor, John B. Smith. I don't know if he exists. And it's a really nice technique to take selfies of random strangers. <sighs> now, going over Wi-Fi briefly. When you're doing a, a Wi-Fi test, because back in 2000, Wi-Fi test was really awesome. You could be a hero. People had WEP. So, like, you could break things in within minutes. That's awesome. But now companies are being way more serious. People have EAP, valid clients. It's very, very difficult now to do a valid pen a, a, a valid, to have results on a pure Wi Fi engagement. I mean, now people, the industry has matured and now Wi Fi can be difficult. So, but you have to show results. Besides flipping a table, what do you do? Well, you cheat. It's a bit small. Let me read it to you. So uh, now this is the logo of CGI, a company in Canada. I have it in bell blue and in Telus green also, which are three um, three major ISP uh, major um, organizations. So it's new Wi-Fi access. Hi, welcome to company's wireless service, blah, 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 connect to Guest Corp, enter your Windows credentials. The interesting part, and I'm not sure if you see this, the tape at the top, is I go early in the morning and I glue it to the outside doors of buildings because I don't have physical access. And you wouldn't believe how many people enter the credentials. It's like fishing, but easier. It's... <laughs> And so, and I'm really, really bad at drawing, so what I did is I went on Fiverr, I paid $5 to get this, and it works really, really well. So next time you have to do a, fish, a, a, a Wi-Fi engagement, instead of buying those huge, huge antennas and then trying to go on Cloudcracker, try to take a, an exchange and try to crack it, and then you need a certificate and do all that stuff, which is awesome, but it's complicated. How about we just cheat? All right, if it's stupid and it works, then it ain't stupid. Now, when you're doing your Wi-Fi portal thing, 
use a different SSID than a real one. The reason why people have whips, people have fancy technologies to block it, but they only block your own technology. Like I couldn't be NSEC guest. But if I had an SSID called new NSEC guest, or this one works, or any one of those, then it would work and most whips would be none the wiser. Right? So as you're doing, uh, if you're doing this technique, just use a different SSID and you'll bypass pretty much all the WIPs technology. Hacking now. So I'm going, uh, I'm going a bit fast because I really want you guys to eat today. Um, so in most, if you, has any of you done any internal pen test? You'll see that in most organizations with Responder, GPP, Mimikatz, and perhaps uh, a lot of PowerShell love, you can do lots of stuff. But sometimes all of this is blocked. What do you do then? Well, you can cheat. So most of the, in most of the tests I've had, people were complaining that Mimikatz was blocked. All right, Mimikatz is blocked, that's fair. But if you're, you need to be an admin to run Mimikatz, right? So if you're an admin and you can run Mimikatz, could you just disable it? Here's a registry request. If you do this, you remove the anti-Mimikatz fix. You're done. One line. I mean, why people bother? Like, there's like now there's anti anti Mimikatz and people try to do stuff, but you could just remove it. One line. Done. Um, now here's my favorite technique that got me into pretty much every pen test. And it's so stupid you wouldn't believe it. It's called power spraying. So like when people so if you do brute force, I think you don't understand the game. Most of the time brute force is a last resort thing. But let's do it the other way. For every account, let's try one password. If you're in Quebec, try Soleil Zero. Because that's the password that works the most. I have done, I keep stats on those, and in Quebec, that is the password that works the most in the organizations. I cannot tell you here why, but later on I can explain. I have, I have traced it to the, where, why it is. But otherwise, try company name 2016. Welcome one, let me in. So you try one password for, all, for every users. And this works so well, you wouldn't believe it. It's, it's like magic, but no skills required. It's awesome. And it's so stupid. You should try it. In people who are on the defense side, try this. You won't lock anything. And I swear, you'll get hundreds of accounts. So company name the year, and then company name one, two, three. Um, check your policies. Sometimes you put exclamation mark in the end, but you won't need it. To be honest, this is way more than enough. And it works, you'll get hundreds of passwords. So if you're doing a pen test, so ex external pen test, and you got a list of users and you want to get in the VPN, like don't research zero days on VPNs. Just try Soleil Zero if you're in Quebec. That you're done. Like don't bother. Anyway. So now in some organizations you want to do power spraying, but PowerShell is blocked. Uh, there are really cool research right now on how to run PowerShell when PowerShell.exe doesn't exist anymore. But just use bat, don't just use uh, Windows like a bat script, and that works really well. So now here's the ugly truth about Windows. There's an attack called SMB Relay that exists since 1996, and while there was some patches in 203 that kind of somewhat a bit made the attack more difficult to execute, well, less trivial to execute. SMB Relay is an awesome attack. What SMB Relay allows you is to impersonate anyone without knowing their password and no matter what the password complexity is. So that means that my client, who had a 20-character long policy, if you use SMB Relay, you're all set. You can impersonate a user. The very interesting part is that Tenable Nessus says this finding is a low finding. So nobody ever, ever fixes this. So this will be like, you'll get shells with this all day long. So if you're stuck and you have no exploit, you have no users, you have no credentials, 
that SMB really is your uh, is your friend. And this SMB really X is a kind of new um, library from Impacket. Those guys are awesome. That does everything, even for the new protocols like uh, uh, the new NetNTLM and everything. So SMB really is your friend. That's the request. I'll talk a bit more about SMB really. Now let's say all those things don't work. You can still cheat. Call support. If you're admin and you got Mimikatz, then you can get passwords in clear or use the steps before to disable anti Mimikatz. And then you call and you need support to call to connect to you. And obviously, when support connects to you, you get their password in clear or their Cerberus token. So, how can you convince Help Desk to connect to you? Well, I have two favorites, and basically, I use always those two things. My screen background is asking me for money. Because when you think about it, most ransomware, that's what they do. And if there's something that worries right now a help desk person, is this. So they will really, really connect to you as soon as possible and try to fix what's the problem. If that doesn't work, I have this really weird thing. And it doesn't make sense much, but people, like, it doesn't fit in any workflow, so they just connect right to you is, why did you install a dancing pig icon on my desktop? Like, what's this dancing pig thing? So the average help desk guy just go in their, in, in their workflow and dancing pig, dancing pig, uh, uh, and they connect to you. And that's exactly what you want, because once you've, you've connected to them, then you can cheat. You can invoke Mimikatz, SMB Relay. Um, in some cases, and now this is the only non-stupid trick, if you're not admin, disk are, disk are encrypted, and you have no way at all to cheat, you freeze the RAM, dump the RAM, and it works. But that, that one is a bit more advanced. And one more thing that I'm using, and this is so much cheating, is I have this executable called fake UAC. And all it does, it prompts you for UAC, asks you for your password, logs it in, on c dash something.txt, and that's it. And it's a stupid trick, like asking for UEC, asking for a password. But if it doesn't work, just start it again. I've had, like, not network admins, the first time they, they, they clicked on it, they, they didn't answer it. But that, by the 22nd time, they were like, yeah, bullshit, I'll just, I'll just enter it. And it works wonders. And so I'm not a, web, I'm not a developer, so I don't do a lot of C Sharp. But C Sharp forms, you just drag and drop something so it somewhat looks like a UAC form, like it's a, a two minute job. So, phishing. So, to go back to my client, after nine days and a half, I had nothing. And my point of view as a pen tester is if you hire a pen tester and he finds nothing, either the scope or the pen tester is really bad. The scope for my test was everything. So then the pen, the pen tester must have been bad. So what do you do then? Well, in that case, I fished. And it works. So let me show you. Um, I'm not sure if any people do phishing, but here's the thing. Sometimes phishing must be secret, but people try to skew the result and tell their secretary, who then tells John from engineering, who then tells Mary from HR, who then tells it to somebody. And next thing you know, everyone knows about the phishing test but you still need to deliver results. What do you do? You cheat. So here's my phishing. It's a bit small, so I'll read it. I think it's the world's worst phishing ever. Hello, I'm the Prince of Mugabe with, with problems, and I selected you to win $10,000 million. Just click here with a missing image. All right? How many, do you think, how many people do you think fell for it? Pretty much no one. But just next, I send this email with the logo of the company. It's, hello, at company name, we take company very seriously. As such, you may have received a fake email. I'd like to thank all employees who followed proper procedures. People who clicked on the link may be subject to sanction and penalties in accordance to HR policies. Visit this link for a list of employees who clicked on the phishing email. If there are any errors, please report to them before March 8th. <laughs> so
So I had a whooping 98% success rate <laughs> out of a 4,000 employee. So it was a decent thing. Um, and you'll also notice there's a missing icon at the bottom in this one too, all right? And there's one reason for it. You recall when I talked talk to you about SMB really being awesome because it gives you shell as long as people connect to you? Users are trained to forward their phishing email to support people and security admins. And those are the exact people we want shells from. So, in fact, this email, I didn't get any passwords, but I did get shells. The reason why I got shells is because that people found it so sketchy that they forwarded it to their security admin who checked it. And since he checked it with the SMB relay connected to me, and then I got a shell on their workstation using this. So you can cheat within a cheat. I mean, you can, I always, always put fake images with SMB relay because people will forward it to their support. That's what they're told to do. So yeah, that's really, really awesome. Um, yeah, a few things when you're doing domain selections. Um, my favorite is just re replace a dash instead of a dot. So uh, support dash my domain, dub 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 dash my domain, HR dash my domain. So, and it works really, really well. It's stupid, it works. Costs me 15 bucks and that works really well. One thing if you're doing phishing, always set up SPF records. It's really trivial. Uh, I use SendGrid to send my emails. They send 4,000, I send 4,000, I send 4,000 emails in one day with them. It works really well. All you need to do is have a valid SPF record. It's stupid and it's really worth it. No more spam for you because being in your spam filter is a problem. Um, if you're doing phishing, make your life easy. I use Phishing Frenzy. It's an awesome framework. It's in Ruby. It's really, really great. Uh, if you want, I'm also told GoFish is really good. So if you're doing phishing, please don't do it by hand and start over all the time. You use those two phishing uh, frameworks. They work awesomely well. Uh, one more key point before going to questions. Um, as we're doing pen tests, we're told, oh, I always look for my logs. How can you tell if people look at their logs or not? It's a good question, right? Well, what I do is I send this request. It's or one equals script alert dash dash slash dash dash slash password. So that request does exactly nothing. But it raises every alert possible. And then I send this refer, which, oh, it's a bit, uh, I have this refer that I only send there. So if people crawl my referer, it works, then I know the logs are being looked. And you can even cheat and fish there with the SMB relay thing. Because sometimes on LinkedIn, I have the name of the admins. And then I have admin name naked as a referer, dot com as a referer or uh, this person's porno as a referer. And so uh, if I know which sysadmin will look at the logs, I can have their name in the referer and I'm sure they will click. And the moment they visit the referer, then I do my SMB relay and I get shells and so on. So th th those are like really, really stupid tricks, but they really work. Um, and that's pretty much it. Do you have any questions?